All right, guys, so finally we have arrived at the magic moment where we will expose some type of public API for a little app here that we've created. So let's have a look at that. So basically I kept this fairly simple because I will show you, I'll kind of show you what I did and then I will we'll just briefly touch on a few things that I think is worth considering here. So basically I've created this translation API controller and all it is, this is another REST controller that is going to add, act as the entry point to for the public part of our system. And this is, it, it, it kind of depends on your philosophy here because one part of it is that in, from a security perspective this is not ideal. Not because it's not, you know, not because we can't secure it, but rather because the system is now basically exposing administrative endpoints and usage endpoints on the same server. And that's not a great thing. I mean, if we if we were to just run this product as is, that would basically mean that an external party, such as a hacker or a third party application or like our own client and stuff like that, they could access this route, but they can also access the other routes that are meant for the internal tool, which is not a good thing. So basically what we would have to do is to either create like some really strong restrictions on the this endpoint and the other endpoints. I mean, we do have credentials, which is probably fine, but it's still, I mean, the credentials that we are using aren't like perfect or anything like that. A more ideal solution to this would have been something like to run a separate server where you have the you might have one instance, you might create two instances of this application, and then you have some type of load balancer, or some type of network policy in front of everything saying that in the one instance that is supposed to be used for public usage, you would just allow, allow this endpoint to be connected to. That's the only, only endpoint. And in the internal thing where you actually have an administrator of some sort, you would restrict that, or rather you would just restrict that to some internal network so it's not possible to access that from just the internet, right? But that's that's beside the point. To kind of solve this problem, I just add this little section called public here. And then we take a request parameter that is just going to be a string that represents the language. Now, if we had changed this, I mean, I kind of realize, I mean, the problem with just using language is that it's not a locale. And locale is the thing that you should go with, but I didn't have the energy to go back and like fix all of that stuff. So we're just going to stick with that for now. But in a perfect world, you wouldn't just use this a string that represents the language simply because the we usually there is a difference between say um, English and English like UK English or American English and so forth and hopefully that makes sense to you but since this is a fairly simple application we don't really have to account for that but a good rule of thumb is when you're dealing with languages always 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 use the locale anywho so this is our little endpoint now I changed the translation service a little bit. Let's actually have a closer look at that because it becomes a little bit arcane here. So the way we did this is because the way that the model is structured, basically we have a translation that holds the key. <clears throat> And then we have multiple translation texts, as you remember, which is the thing we wanted. We don't actually want the whole translation because the whole translation actually contains all of the trans possible translations, but when we specify a language, we really only want the translations that are connected to that language. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a stream that's just going to stream through all of the, we're going to find all of the translation keys, right? And then we're going to go through each translation, and then we're going to get the translations, like the uh, actually translation text. And then we're going to flat map that because we're going to get back a list of lists, if you will. So, and then we're going to stream create a stream around that and then we're going to stream through that list and we're just going to filter out all of the text that has the language that we provided. And that's going to give us back a flat array or like an array of translations basically. And then we're going to sort these uh, translations basically, uh, the ones that we're getting back. And the reason why we want to sort them is because as you know we have this um, revision uh, history thing. So we don't just want to load all of the translations that are connected to a specific key because we will have a history. Right? We just want the most recent one at all times. Otherwise we would get like every translation we've ever made for a specific key, right? And that's not what we want. So we, we sort this 
and then we simply create an iterator and we grab the first element that's it and then we collect this and make it into a list and that's pretty much it and then I had this little insight that I yes I, I don't really want to escape my mind here because because the way that we've structured this let's have a look at this file here the security config I updated that as well to just say that you can access that you can be an anonymous user you don't need credentials for this but you can be an anonymous user and you can hit this public endpoint right but I don't know I just forgot about it since I decided to go this way instead to just create two in memory users instead of having actual users in the database we don't really need the user models anymore or the services so I just remove those because it doesn't make sense I mean it's not being used or anything so I'm just gonna throw that away for now and that's pretty much it. So we're pretty much in a state now where we can run our production. Like uh, the, uh, we can actually use this file here for our production configuration, or rather, well, we'll go to package JSON and run our dist job. So that basically what we do here is we do npm run dist, and what that's going to do now is, as we've seen here before. It's going to, uh, let's just wait through it. Uh, it's going to generate a production version of our assets like this. This is all our client side assets with our hash and everything that is good and well with the world. And it's going to put it in our resource public directory. So we just create, we just ran a job that is going to go here. And inside of here, we see that, hey, here's, like here are all the files that we're actually going to serve up under the public directory, right? And now that we've done that, we are going to say Gradle build. And Gradle build is going to basically package our application. So now we've created our package or the package application. And then we're going to say Java dash jar. And we're going to say build and libs and localizer. And here is our build. So let's try to start that up. And as you can see, this is a very similar output to what we saw in Eclipse. And it's going to load everything up. Da 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 da. And there we are. And so now we should be able to go to localhost, not 3000, because 3000 doesn't do anything because we're not using the dev server, right? We're going to actually go to 880, which is the port that we're actually using. And here is our application. So if I just log out, now you see now that the redirect actually puts me at the right place, which was an issue we had when we were using the proxy server. But now it does work. So let's say foo and foo, and then we log in, and here we can see that we can add some keys like this. And then we hit save, and then we have a bunch of translations, right? So let's take a, let's, let's do a curl here. Let's do and like let's just curl this for Swedish and now you see that the Swedish returns an empty string and the reason why it returns an empty string is because we don't have anything there but if we do English you will see that it returns the text ASD. So what I can do now is on the other hand is to do something like that and say QQ and then I can hit Swedish and now we're actually going to get the most latest translation and I can of course I mean I can update this several times and it's just going to get me the most recent one. And if I add another key, like something like this, you will see that it's going to return both of them. So now we have the empty string and the thing that we just changed. And yeah, that's pretty much us packaged our application. So yeah, no, I, I'm feel I feel pretty happy with this. There might be a few more things that I would like to tweak if I were to deploy this into some type of internal system or like create a real application. Of course, we would have to test it, and there are a few bugs that would be nice to fix. But overall, I think we're gonna call this pretty much ready for testing or done or whatever we want to call it. So this is where we would submit the work and just have someone run through it and have bugs uh, reported and like fix other stuff. But for now, I think that this is pretty much as far as we're going to go. So hopefully you found this useful. Have a great day.